Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome back to Opus Manu with Light. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Since this game doesn't actually have requirements on what sort of solution you make, so long as you just make a solution, it's not entirely well explained what each of the factors means. So cost is very, very obvious. The cost, well, you look at the items in your solution and, well, you add up the price tag. Cost is super simple. Area, only slightly less so. Because if you've got yourself a reagent, you've got yourself a product, you've got yourself an arm, the area that you use is basically just you, you grab it, you push it, and you drop it. And so our area starts at four. One, two, three, four. Then, as you use up more space, it counts up more space. So any empty hexagon that you send your stuff over adds onto this area stat down here as you build it. Now, in general, this is very simple and straightforward. But there are a couple of circumstances in which it's a little bit less so. So, for example, say we take this guy and we grab ourselves one of these. And then we grab something here and spin it about. So, number one is going to grab and pull twice, drop it, grab the next one, turn it, drop it, and once we drop that, number two is going to do its job and send it over this way. And so when we start it, we're using up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. All uh, right. We need to start it in the correct place. So we grab it and we drop it and we grab it. And we bind it. We're still at seven. Now, number two is going to grab it, and it's going to move it over here, which makes it look like we're going to be adding three hexes because we pass over this one and drop it off on these two. So that's one, two, three, puts our area at 10. But unfortunately, our area is now 12 because we didn't just pass over these three. We also passed over these two. No matter how little it is that you pass over them, it does in fact cross into those two hexes. So that's the thing to watch out for when trying to figure out the area of your solution. Sometimes you don't think you're crossing over a hex, but you really are. But the reason I'm making this episode was because someone in the comment section was confused about cycles. Because that's a word that isn't necessarily in your daily parlance in this, you know, sort of context. It's not too hard to understand if you watch it as you play slowly. So as I hit tab, we have gone from zero cycles to one cycle. Uh, tab is the do one step, one instruction. And so as I hit tab, we did a second thing. Our cycles are at two. We do a third thing. We're at three. Every time we do one instruction, we add one to the cycles. Now that has a relationship to what you build down here. But it's not a one to one relationship because it's entirely possible to have a solution with tons of cycles. But have it be incredibly simple down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So this goes across nine boxes. But the number of cycles to complete it is really quite large because it has to cycle through each of these sets of instructions many, many times to get the job done. So this just keeps counting up, counting up, counting up until we have successfully produced six products. The moment we get to six products, it stops here at 108. Now, if you look at this, we used nine columns 
but the repetition is only six long. And if you look at other ones, the repetition could be much longer because we're using this belt this way. <clears throat> and so this repetition is what, 20 long? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four is eight. That's 10 times two is 20. So this repetition is 20 as opposed to six, but the actual number of cycles is only 15. Which makes you think, well, wait, if the repetition is 20, how are there only 15 cycles? Well, it's because we end up finishing it before we actually make a full cycle. That we only make it to 15 out of 20 before the thing is done. So we've managed to reach our cycles before we've even looped at all due to the nature of this solution of this puzzle. So cost is obvious. You just add up the money value of each of your things. Area is fairly straightforward. You look at how much of the hexes are used, but interesting thought, do these count? So we were just at 20 and now we're at 17. So having these marker glyphs does count towards your area. But generally, you only want to put them somewhere that something is going to go regardless. So just if you're going for area, don't just throw these around where nothing is going to go. And then cycles, how many instructions it takes to get from a standstill to dropping your last product in the bin. Just a quick little episode to get back to the basics, let you know exactly what those things mean so that you can start optimizing them in case you made it all the way through and just had tons more cycles than everybody else. Either way, I will see you in the next episode of Opus Monium with light.